Political thing going on right now. What's what's happening right now, guys? Cuba, Cuba, Cuba. What's happening with Cuba? You don't know at all. Not very. It literally. No. It even happened in Jacksonville, which I think this part just. Stupid. Is it is it in the transportation sector? Should I know this? It kind of is actually. Oh, well, it's wow. not really in the transportation sector, but. Tell me what it. What is it? Oh well, like so. Do you not know what's happening right now in Cuba specifically? So in Cuba right now, I feel like ill-equipped for so, this meeting. How dang? Yeah, I, I I thought you knew about politics, John. What right. the heck? All right, John, uh, do your research in like ten seconds. In Cuba, and and this happens like. Ready. Pretty Cuba. T- tiny, like pretty often in most communist countries, right? Uh, the people are protesting, right? They're protest protesting in the streets protesting right everywhere like on to, to the, the the capital building everything they want freedom right they want justice they want Peace. out of this com- communist uh, regime right that's been over them for the past fi- 50 60 years um that's when their last election was 1960 something like that um and yeah and like obviously like we've seen this in v- Venezuela and Cuba's done this before right now it's like it's getting uh, pretty big, right? A lot of people are protesting on the streets. The government's going, uh, like now a, a lot of videos are coming out to the U S and, um, so what's kind of happening in the U S right now is, uh, Cuban Americans are protesting in the streets as well. Where um, in Cuba, in Cuba and in all of Florida. <laughs> oh, wow. Fun fact, actually, they actually went on a part of I-95 a few days ago in Jacksonville and were protesting on the highway. <laughs> Some people got arrested in Where Tampa. Where was this at? It was in Jax. Uh, I think Jack, Jack Peace actually had it on his Snapchat. But it, uh, wow. look it up. I'm on, it's probably news for Jax. Um, nobody got arrested in Jacksonville, but apparently a few people got arrested in Tampa. Um, and like that, th- that's not really the part I want to talk about. Um, that's just what's on the like the main news headlines, right? Kind of to me the the mo- the most interesting part is, um, is to John. I guess this part is what you would be most interested in and like have the most knowledge on is, um, okay. So there is a communist country that is that is. But it's is killing people, right? We you we we know communism bad, right? Yeah. There there there's a country ninety miles away that's having all these problems and people are dying. Uh, as, uh, protesters in Cuba are treated a little differently than the ones in the U.S. You say a bunch of bad shit, you get shot in the head, right? So so John, what should the U.S. be doing to try to? To, to should should they be doing anything? Should they help um, these people in this communist dictatorship? Um, if people, if people, if more people are try to migrate by boat, should we accept them with open arms? What is kind of your view on that? I'm curious. Should we accept them with open arms? Of your questions for me, the easy that's the easiest one. I would say absolutely no. Definitely not. I don't think, um, yes, it seems like a quick fix because they go from a communist nation to a capitalist one. But I would say the welfare of the people already here outweighs the yeah, suffering I, of the I people know, abroad. I, I know you're definitely going to say that part. Um, I guess that would be so, that'd be very progressive, obviously, moving them all into, they'd come into what, Florida? A lot of them would. 100%. They all, a lot of them have a lot of fame in Florida. Um, but how does and you know like, you so so I think kind of the, the interesting is interesting thing is now is that a lot of Democrats are siding on that side as well. Kind of right now since they're pushing this kind of socialist agenda, um, talking about how a lot of socialist ideas are good, and that um, a lot of what a lot of Democrats are saying right now is that. The reason, and and this is what they they always say, right? The reason that the social, like this socialist slash communist um, government isn't working is because of the man is like they're they're doing it wrong, right? They're doing it wrong. If we did it, but if we did it, we would do it the right way. That's the and age that's what, old story. That's what Bernie would always say. Um, so it's kind of interesting. I think right now more conservatives are siding with the free Cuba, right? Because obviously. Most Republicans hey, don't like communism at all. Yeah. So it's like, but then it's like that fine line. It's like we, we, 
we support that we think communism is bad, but we know that like sending troops there would not would just be a bad idea, and we don't want to help them migrate to our country. Which I guess, and then in the how how like migration works, right? Is isn't it like if you are being threatened by somebody or something isn't the u.s technically supposed to accept you in i'm sure there's supposed i'm sure there's some very liberal policy that they're supposed to house you for a for a period of time but i don't know if the place they hold you or detain you at is in the actual domesticated united states i think it may be in an area that's quite frankly almost like a jail but on the border so, so okay, they so, may they may ensure your welfare, but I don't. They're not going to let you just go freely. Sure, sure, yeah, I, and, and, I, and, and and that makes sense, right? Because we don't know are these people criminal? Were these people criminals right, in Cuba? Right, right. So like you don't know. Um, I guess the the kind of the, the last question would be like, how should we how should help, help them? in your eyes if you were the president? Right. If I was the president, I would honestly help them in the same way I think we should help the Chinese people that are suffering. And that would be to give them some of our greatest tools that prevent government takeover like this. What is that? Guns. Like ship guns over there. Ship guns, fly them in. Because if you think about it, if the people are truly unhappy with the government, you have to ask why. And they're saying it's because they feel oppressed. If they feel oppressed, I don't <laughs> have to know anything about As Cuba to already know you can't own a gun in Cuba. 100%. And I would be willing to believe that if people you can't in have Cuba, internet in Cuba, let alone it's, it's insane. And the same thing in China; it's the exact same thing. If those Cubans had guns, I feel like they'd be a lot less oppressed. And the United States that makes so many guns, let's say we donate a hundred million dollars of guns to Cuba, that's maybe like five guns a person. Just donate so many guns over there. Jesus. All of the civilians that were I mean, there would be like a civil war, man. <laughs> I mean, it, but if, the, if that's the case, I mean, what's the alternative? Let half of them no, come yeah. over here? I mean, I think that we need to give them well, the like same. Right, right now, right? They're, they're, they're losing the fight, obviously, because they don't have guns, right? So a lot right. of, uh, I've, I've been hearing a lot of gover, uh, re Republican uh, sites or channels, right, calling this a, a genocide, not a, not a protest, because only one side has guns, right? <laughs> And I think that's more what it is. It's it's a genocide. I mean, if the people, if the government in Cuba is killing people, I mean, if you ask why, it's because they're not happy with the way the people are combating against them. But if the same body that's saying no guns is the one that's oppressing, that's just, you know, it, it's like, in what way could Cubans win the fight? They can't. They can't win the fight. That's why they're fleeing. So if they love their homeland and they truly value um, the history and the culture of their country and just want to rid the virus that is their government, they need guns to do that. And that's honestly probably a much cheaper and safer alternative than to allow these people protest on our highways, um, you know, loot or whatever they're going to do in our cities. And quite frankly, even if we let them over here, that doesn't solve the problem at hand back in Cuba. And, I, and to, be, to be fair, I would say the same thing with China just on a much larger scale because you're talking about billion plus not you know what's the population of cuba it's probably less than you know like a couple million i'd say somewhere around there probably you know a million or two not and let's say not even every okay 11 oh wow 11 million people well, I didn't really um see yeah we've got plenty of guns for that <laughs> i'd say there's really no shortage of that but then not to be on the other side but if you give guns then there, there's definitely going to be more killings like if you give them now who would you say the killings are by? Um, Who's killing who? I have no idea. Um, <laughs> yes, I will agree that shipping more guns over there will result in more people dying by bullet, but I would say that there would be less government killing the people. And that's the problem that I'm trying to solve as president. What if you threaten the Cuban government that you're going to release guns in their... Um, would that I don't even think you need to threaten them. I think you just drop them, drop the guns, literally airdrop them. <laughs> I mean, sure. And drop them like in Florida. Wait, because, okay. but think about right, this: if how many? Okay. If you're the if you're the government in Cuba, and overnight the United States has airdropped 
you know, a million plus guns. What is that? Like, is that? Don't it... worry. We'll get the logistics figured out. Don't no, worry about I'm that. I'm not even talking about the lo logistics. I'm talking about, like, what does Cuba think of the U.S.? Because we have some ties, right, with Cuba. Right. Well, Being yeah, and that's so what I, I need to see more of the business relations we have. But this is this is almost ethics, really. Yeah. We're 100%. watching a country kill its people because it can take advantage of them. And that's something we've been watching China do for a while with the Uyghurs. But if let's say we airdrop the guns, let's say we only airdrop like a thousand guns. If Cuba knows we airdropped guns, just that little drop in the water, like little drop in the bucket of progress. Now the police officers before knocking on the door, having no fear that that citizen's going to comply. Now they have to worry in the back of their head. Oh, if I break in and haul the person out, his family member is going to shoot us. Cause what do they have left to lose? So it's honestly a big uh, psychological thing. Now the people that are in the police are going to be less likely to do these heinous crimes on the civilians. Now the civilians that are already losing everything, they're going to kill on their way out, I would say. I mean, if you're being like, if, put yourself in your perspective. Like if the government broke into your house in the middle of the night and put a gun to your rest of your family's head and you had a gun in the back room, I would at least start shooting yeah. before I died. Ooh. And that's something the government's going to have to think about before they deploy all of their officers. I mean, how big is Cuba's military? It can't be more than 100,000. There's way more uh, civilians than military. For sure. And I don't think you need more than a couple hundred thousand to get the job done, especially when one side has all the guns. And I think that's why the United States, uh, I'm not even, so what is that? Active personnel, 50,000. Reserve personnel, 40,000. When there's 11 million people in the... <laughs> on the and the then it says, I mean, that's always fit, how it works. It says people fit for, for military service, almost 2 million. And then, oh, wow, there's just as many. There's almost 4 million people in Cuba fit for military service, but there's only about, let's say, at most 100,000 military members. I think that people would, I think that would that's just That's like every problems. kid over 18, right? Like, I'm, I'm sure it's probably some I mean, loose I, definition. It says I'm, between I'm sure, 15 I'm and sure, 40. To be honest, I, I'm sure it, the United, sta United States have a similar like percentage of military. Yeah. Um, but no. regardless, like even if the United States had, you know, half the population was military and then turned the military on the civilians, the military is not going to have an easy job in, you know, establishing complete and total authoritarian command because they know that we're about to oppress people that once they realize there's no end in sight for the people, they're going to go out shooting. And I think that's something that's probably the purest part of America. Yeah, no, like 100%, like, right, like our Second Amendment being that we are giving guns to overpower the government if it gets to too invasive right um it's kind of insane right it's like th yeah. the government telling us that we can shoot at them if we're doing a bad job absolutely isn't that kind of crazy and do, do you i think joe biden said something about why do you need a sniper rifle for a hunting because the classic is oh i need it for food well why do you need this gun to kill a deer when this gun would completely just obliterate a deer what's the point point? and i think the thing everybody forgets about is we don't have guns for deer or for chickens, or for squirrels. So we have guns for you, the, Joe Biden. I, I, That's what we have a, guns a for. A lot of Democrats kind of are denying that that is the reason. That, what, that is why that, that yeah, No, that the reason the Second Amendment is there is to um, is to control an invasive government. I think so a lot the, of Democrats so are, are denying that and saying that I don't support that at all. Well, it doesn't matter if they support it. <laughs> well, right, but it's, so it's like that's part of the guns. I, I, and then like a lot of Democrats are also saying like, what is your AR-15 gonna do against the army's tank, right? So, it's, then, um, the army it's, doesn't have that many tanks. First of all, you know what I mean, though. Like they're bigger, more. Powerful Absolutely. Weapons. I mean, if they drove a tank up on, you know, into into a village, or into you know somebody's neighborhood, um, I don't know if that'd be like the best way to do it. But let's just say it was some <laughs> like you know, let's say they just chose. It'd probably be easier uh, if they just bombed the whole United States. Well, I already don't know what we're doing at that point anyways. If we're going to bomb our own resources, what are we even trying to save? But, uh, you know, I would say... To, well, it would be like the government to, keeping control, right? Which is... Just to bomb, like, the retaliating cities? I mean... I'm not saying that's a good idea. <laughs> that's obviously... You know, I, well, anyways, with the, with the democratic point of view that, you know, 
the Second Amendment's not for controlling an invasive government because in their mind, there is no option for There is no invasive government. Government, no matter how big it is, is always, you know, good. I think that's the big difference where there's people, there's like two types of people, people that view the government with just naturally good intentions and then people that view the government as corrupt. It's one or the other. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say that I definitely fall in the corrupt category, and because of that, I value a gun for nothing more. I don't hunt. I buy my food but, at Walmart. Okay, but would you say that your gun in your house is more to protect yourself for intruders than the government? Oh, it definitely is. It, it definitely is for. And I think that's what most people home defense. Yeah, absolutely. Do. Um, most but, people, I feel like, don't want to get their AR-15 and shoot at the government. <laughs> right? <laughs> shoot at cops. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty rough man because if, if it gets to that point like yeah. the whole i remember the whole country screwed right i remember yeah. in college i think i took a class on like political science uh, -oh. uh yeah no but they said that for a, a country to be a nation like in quotes it has to have full autonomy and like full uh or something else, some some other word where they have to, you know, their military has to be able to defend against the citizens. Um, I think I've heard about that too. The military defending against citizens. Let's guys, let's imagine for a second. Like, let's say the military right now today is ordered by Joe Biden to cons cons to oppress and take all guns yeah. away from U.S. citizens. Um, that would not work. Here's why: the military, I'd say, overwhelmingly, is conservative. They are those same people that go home with a gun in their room for home defense. They are those same people that have a gun to defend themselves against invasive government. They are the same people that know they can leave the military at any point in time they want to. A lot of them are the same people that use guns for hunting. But if they're ordered to oppress the nation, how many of this military do you think are just going to quit? I wouldn't I wouldn't serve I mean, under a commander in chief that stands against my own values. I, I couldn't see I myself doing that. that. Just, okay, so what's the cost of that, though? So if you decide to keep your gun, what, what's the cost of of that? Like, uh, oh, talking about, like, if it's, like, an $800 tax per year per gun? No, I'm talking type about, of thing, like, or? they say that all guns are, are gone. Like, you cannot have a, this type of gun in your um, house anymore. I would assume so. that then you'd be talking about, you know, like, the DEA or the ATF going door-to-door in new zealand guns. they didn't go door to door did they um i'm not sure but i don't think you're gonna get all guns unless you go door to door and when you do go door to door searching through people's houses that's when police start dying i think that's when a lot everybody that's when the both sides, you know right? that's when military yeah. starts getting shot at um but how, how, how long have we been going aaron over an hour Okay. Yeah, I can talk about this forever. Oh, 59, okay. I got, 37. I got one more interesting topic uh, we it. can talk about. But anyways, to wrap that up, the United States will never fall by invasive government. I can guarantee you that. Fall by invasive government? Never will. Never will, yeah. never will lose its... Just like, just like checks and balances monitor the government. You know, yeah. The Second Amendment monitor as the citizens monitor How, the do government. You, do you think our government is going to be more liberal every single year like no no okay well, that's a whole other there's topic a, okay yeah, yeah. there's a whole uh, uh five it, yeah governments, seconds. governments tend to switch a lot so it's like yeah because one side can blame the other can yeah blame the other can yeah blame the other. It, so since like you know just just since we've been alive basically bush it has switched yeah, yeah bush obama switched. trump biden it's been yeah. republican democrat republican democrat it's it's like it just yeah, flip flops it, a lot, been... so I don't think, um, I don't think any the government is uh, going towards one side or the other. I think I think it flop, flip flops all the yeah. time. Um, Another statistic just to throw out there: and remember, uh, thirteen million, I believe it's thirteen million, United States citizens out of the three hundred and fifty million that live in the United States are concealed carry weapon holders legally. And I'm sure there's another 13 million that do it illegally. Um, I'm sure there's probably more than that because we're not going to know. And some of those may be criminals or whatever. But the point is, that many people hold guns on their person or have the ability to do so. So how could a government that wants to oppress the people 
um, just round up people and take their guns away when it knows that, you know, 10% of them have a gun on their person at any point in time. It's just not a smart bet. Like, they're going to get shot. Yeah. And that's, Cuba doesn't have that worry. Cuba is not sure. worried about those 13 million. Cuba doesn't have anything like that. Um, but anyways, those, that was my closing remark for that <sighs> category. Good topic, though, Stephen. We could go for another yeah, and I got, six hours. I feel like I got that. another pretty spicy topic. Oh, let's hear it. 330 spicy. million, it looks like. All right. Yeah. Pretty, yeah, so pretty... it's, it's actually like 30%, 30, 30 of people have considered carrying. Well, legal, but that's still, legally. Yeah, legally. legally. <laughs> which is still, still a lot, so... Okay. Have, okay one last thing more, on more people more I, people have concealed <laughs> carry than the population of cuba i saw in it there one last thing steven i saw some i read some article that said um there are a total of like 26 i don't even remember there's a total of you know somewhere between like 10 and 50 million guns reported in the united states yeah. But gun manufacturers estimate the actual number of guns in the United States is closer to uh, 500 million. So you've got 90% of all guns. 80% <laughs> of all guns are not even reported. Just off that alone. So what, people are making their own guns? People just don't report it when they buy it. Um, people pass it down from their are grandfather and they still have it. Um, people, like a lot of people just have guns in their house they never use. Like ever. I'm, yeah, like sure. Show, I'm sure there's some cases. buried. And you know, there's, you're never going to know. That's the thing. You're never going to know. So that's for the government to worry about, because I'm sure not worried. I know my neighbors will back me up when the government rolls up on our street. <laughs> uh, hopefully that they never come.